with our second guest. Actually, we didn't go anywhere, but I mean, our second guest is here now. She's, you know, all comfy on the couch. I'm comfy. comfy on the couch. You want one of these pillows, honey? You want to put it behind your back? You good? Yeah, get comfortable. Get comfortable. We got a lot to chit chat about. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you remember that one of my past guests has been um, Nicole J. Nicole Means. And she is a beautiful model, and uh, she's actually written a book, and it's Help Her Heal. It's about her, her journey um, into healing after her abuse, which was, um, which was, I guess you can say, inflicted on her by a very close friend. So she has a book out. She's now making a screenplay. She's been here, and once she finishes with her play, because she's making a stage production as well, we're going to bring her back to the couch so she can just share about what's going on. But anywho, Nicole called me, and she says, oh, there's a young lady you have to meet. She's got this powerful story. Um, and she's ready to share it. She wants on the couch. Um, and I just want you to talk to her. So we went back and forth for a minute. You know, should I give her your number? Should you call her? Blah, 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 blah. So eventually, this young lady and I um, end up connecting. And we spoke on the phone. And she started, I mean, she just had this energy like, I have got this story. I've got this testimony. And I just, I got to get it out of me. Now, I'm not saying she hasn't shared before or, or spoken to other people, but she's never been on the couch. So, um, I thought it would be wonderful. You know, we talked about doing a private session in the park with the couch and everything. But then we were like, you know what? Cassie Live is coming up. Perfect, perfect, perfect time to have this young lady on the couch, Lolita Perry. Hello, darling. Hi. How are you? And I didn't oh, know we wonderful. were Facebook friends. Yes. I mean, have we been Facebook friends or no, was this new? It, it was fairly new. Okay, um, okay. When Nicole okay. mentioned you, I said, I sent you a face. I said I sent her a request, and she hasn't. She hasn't accepted it yet. She hasn't oh. accepted my. Sorry, don't take that personally. It's like she probably has a bunch. I of do. Go <laughs> I do. <laughs> and I go through, and I'm like, how many friends in common do right? we have? Do do? And I'm like, okay, no profile picture, delete. Delete. Um, yeah. <laughs> I go through mine. And you got porn. Delete. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you say a lot of bad things. Words. Delete. Like That's we were right. just talking That's about right. with with Miss Aretha. Um, words. If you've got all that cursing and stuff I on your page, to come down my timeline. Thank you. We can't be friends. No. We can't be friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that we are. I saw your pictures, and the first thing I noticed about her, I don't know if you can see them. She has got these amazing freckles. She has got these freckles. They are so friggin' beautiful. I love them. I love them. Thank you so much. You know what? When I was a kid, I hated my freckles. And, and when I do. say hated, I hated. I actually have a sister, and um, she said when she was younger, when she started getting them, she asked God to stop. She said, I don't want no more. She said, she didn't get no more. I didn't think of that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know God but answers prayers, I, I but about your freckles. I didn't think of that. For but real. once I got to the age where people started complimenting me on my uh -huh. freckles, I'm like, okay. And how old was that? How, how long did that take? You know what? It actually took about, I was probably like 22. Oh, wow. 21, really? 21, yeah, 22 before really? people started complimenting me on my height. I'm about six feet tall, mm -hmm. on my freckles. So the things that I thought were, you know, my uh, flaws. Yeah, my mm -hmm. flaws, yeah, yeah. you know, turned out to be a blessing. Some you know of what I mean? Greatest Something greatest selling points. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I just, it, it, it took me a long time to own them because mm. of how I looked at myself, mm, because okay. of how I, because of the rejection that I suffered as a child. You know what, let's jump right into let's it then. I mean, you're right here because it. you are a survivor. I'm not just a survivor, I just wanna say that because okay, okay. I love surviving. Surviving mm -hmm. is awesome. Mm -hmm. But you know what, I'm overcomer. You know what, because we can survive something, but to overcome it, yes. you know what I mean? That's, that's. You're right, that's, you're absolutely you, right. It, it, when, you, it, when you can overcome something, you can have the strength to pull somebody on a, on another platform, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I just I just I just I, li I like Survivor. I li I love this. I love Cassie. Thank you. I love Thank the you. emancipated, emancipated. I mean, I never go back. Never go good, back. I, good. It's it's done. Good. good it's for done. You. Good for you. But um, I guess my story begins. Um, I was adopted. I was adopted, it was my sister and I, and I was um, three years old, so I've always known I was adopted. Mm -hmm. I thank God for my biological parents because she could have aborted me, you know? Yeah, um, true. Through whatever circumstances, mm -hmm. um, we were taken from our, our parents. Mm -hmm. and, um, and some people were just meant to be carriers. You know what I mean? Some people were just, and I don't mean to cut you off, no, but okay. you know, I've, I've talked to people who say, you know, my parents went around. My parents, I was raised by my grandma, mm -hmm. but you know what? My biological, my biological mother, she was a carrier. She wasn't meant to raise me. She wasn't meant to instill her 
sense of values in me. Right, right. She was meant to carry me that I might be here and be raised by someone else and the other people in my family right. to make me the woman that I am That's today. Right. And I thank God for that. That's right. So I can't be mad at mm -hmm. my, my, my mom or my dad, well, my biological mother and my father for not raising me because mm -hmm. they were not capable of being the parents that I needed. That God wanted you to have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, you know, I, get it. I, I, I thank God for your biological as well. Yeah, I get because it. Because she, you know, maybe she knew or did not know what her strengths or weaknesses were, and so she allowed somebody else. Well, growing up, when I found out that my mother had five children, okay. see, I didn't understand that I was taken. Okay. You, I didn't know. I had no idea. Um, so the thought was always, why? You know what I mean? Why didn't she want me? Why didn't she want me? Not, yeah. You know, and growing up, um, my, my parents that uh, adopted us were good people in terms of they not only adopted uh, myself and my sister, they adopted another child. So they, they wanted to pro provide a home mm -hmm. for children, you know, who didn't have homes. And I, and I owe them my life for that. I thank God for them. My father, who is deceased now, but my mother, she's still alive. Mommy, if you ever see this, I love you so much, and I, I, I could never repay you for what you've done for me. You know, and you, you guys were talking about earlier about um, some of the things our parents said or did not say to us. Mm -hmm. And my mother was one of those people. And it took me, it took me until I was about 20, I guess about 27, to say, you know what, I forgive you. Amen. Because you didn't know. And God had to show me what's not in her, she couldn't put in me. But I had to yes. mature to get to that point to say, you know what, it's not your fault. As a matter of fact, the word of God says, you know, forgive them, Father, for they know yes. not what they do. She didn't know yes. what she was doing when she called me names. She didn't know what she was doing. She just thought, actually, she was, she was living in her emotions because mm -hmm. of what she was going through. And, you know, it, it, it just... It, it had to take me. It had to take me to get on my knees and on my face. You know what I mean? To say she doesn't mean that. She doesn't mean that. And to, for me to really shake it off, mm -hmm. because it was it, it was hurtful. But you know, growing up not knowing who I was, not knowing who I belonged to, not being able to see a face and identify it with. Yeah. You know, um, what I learned later on in life about rejection and abandonment is it does two things to people. You either become guarded. You put up a bunch of walls, mm -hmm. or you become people pleasers. Well, I was yeah. a people pleaser, okay. you know, and whatever, whoever, whoever it was, I didn't care if it was a teacher, a parent, whoever, I just wanted you to know I'm there. I'm the girl, you know what I mean? I'm the girl. Yeah. I just, just choose me, I'm mm -hmm. it, you know? You, you just become <laughs> that person. I remember not even my mother dressing me a certain way, and, and I would hold back my feelings, and later on she would say, what's wrong? And, and I would, couldn't help but to cry at that point. And what's wrong? I don't like this dress. Well, why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, I was that yeah. person. Because um, I was always mindful, because if I said the wrong thing, then you're not going to want me either. You know what I mean? That was my Thank mentality. You. Thank and, you know, you. and through that, as I got older, you know, it, it, it became promiscuity. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I became yeah. very promiscuous. Mm -hmm. And not because I enjoyed sex. It had nothing to do with that. It was just the need and the desire to be loved. My father was a very militant man. He was from the military. He was the, um, he was, uh, my parents are older. Mm -hmm. So my mother's like 80 something, 87 mm -hmm. years old. So oh, wow. back, yeah, she's, yes, so it. yes. Yeah. Um, and my father grew up in Mississippi and he was raised by his, his father, you know, because then it was like the boys had to work the field, the girls stayed at home. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have that compassion in him, mm -hmm. you know, so he didn't take us and love on us. And he wasn't like that. It was just like, okay, I'm, I'm helping provide. My mother had a great job. My father had a great job. So they did it together. But my mother was the one. But I was drawn to my father. I was mm -hmm. a, always been a daddy's girl, always been a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. And I found myself just wanting to be up under my father and he would kind of push me away you know and it didn't matter I was still right there and it got to the point where he said you don't have to speak to me every time you saw me but I was still right there by his side and you know when he passed away he mentioned me in his will you know when he passed away you know he left me something and what my heavenly father showed me was because you got his attention, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what God wants us to do. You know, he wants us to draw close to him yes. and get his attention. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants us to pull close to him because we don't always have what we need in earthly people. So we have to draw close to our heavenly father. But through the process, you know, just being promiscuous and just wanting somebody 
to love because it, my father wasn't doing it. You know, wanting somebody to love me. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it never worked. You know, I was in high school and um, I, I, abusive. I mean, I was in high school with big bruises on my arm. You know, I was in a relationship that just left me beat down. And when I say beat down, I mean beat down. And the only thing I could think was, it's got to be better than this. It was just something that was inside of me that said, there will be a tomorrow. It's got to get better. It's got to get better. It's got to get better. You know, and went through my first marriage and that failed and went through bankruptcy and that didn't work. And, you know, abuse is abuse. So whether it be emotional, mental, psychological, you know, physical abuse, it hurts. And yes. it leaves you yes. wondering what is wrong with me? me. Yes. What's yes. wrong yes. with me? You know, what am I doing wrong? Well, why, why, why won't nobody love me? Why, why didn't he... Why wasn't he faithful to me? You know, why, was, it not, was I not a good wife? Was I not a good this? Was I not a good that? And around that time in my life, God began to call me. He began to call me. When I was five years old, Jesus showed, uh, he, he, he came into my room. I looked up and I saw him and he was with the angels and he was in my, he was in my window, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just so awesome for me to see it. I didn't understand it. But when I look back, by the time I, my, my first marriage ended, when I look back, what I saw was God choosing me at a very young age, and he was calling me at a very young age. And through that, it allowed me to have something to hold on to. Yeah. You understand? I was able to just to hold on to knowing that he loved me, and he put something in me that couldn't nobody ever take out of me.